Alright guys, this is one of those weird videos where I'm not in it, and instead I'm going to show you some equipment. Uh, this is a spectrophotometer, um, and the job of a spectrophotometer is to quantify color, um, and that just really takes some of the ambiguity out of what color something is, and it gives us numbers to work with, which generally makes scientists happy. Um, and so for this lab, we are going to be measuring how much light at a wavelength of 470 nanometers is being absorbed um, as a reaction is taking place. And so before the reaction has occurred, the products, or the, actually the reactants actually, in both test tubes are clear. And then as soon as you combine those two tubes, um, the reaction begins, and again the guaiacol becomes tetraguaiacol when it absorbs oxygen and turns a brown color. And so by monitoring how that color change is happening over time, we can document how fast the reaction is actually occurring. Um, and so before you have that reaction actually go, you want to make sure that your spectrophotometer is zeroed out. Very similar to how with a balance, you would zero out a balance to make sure you were starting at zero. With a spectrophotometer, you want to make sure that um, at your wavelength, it is essentially zeroed out. So when you walk up to it, what you want to make sure of um, is that it says wavelength of 470 right here. I will have said it that way before class started, but if somebody bumps into a knob or something, it might say something different. If it doesn't say 470, you're going to use this knob to change it. And you can see as I twist that knob, it changes wavelengths, and those numbers jump around wildly. And that's okay. Um, so you want to make sure that it says 470 exactly. Okay. Um, then what you want to do is make sure that it's zeroed out for that wavelength. And so you're going to use what's called a blank. Um, a blank is one of your cuvettes. A cuvette looks like a tiny test tube. Um, they're special test tubes. They're made out of special glass. These are about 20, 25 bucks a piece, so be please really careful with them. Um, so you're going to get a cuvette, and you're going to fill it with DI water. Don't use tap water. Use DI water. Um, and you're going to fill it to... And I already stuck it in there. You're going to fill it to, sorry, the bad camera work, the bottom of the line. You see the top of the water. That's where you're going to fill it. And then you're going to put it in the little reader pocket. And you want to put it in there so that the line on your cuvette, the white line on your cuvette, lines up with the line that you can't really see, but there's a line right here on the plastic. You want to line them up perfectly. If for some reason you have touched the bottom of your cuvette where the water is, um, you would want to clean off any fingerprints because that would get in the way of your reading um, with a special kind of wipe called a chem wipe. They're in the green box. There's your chem wipes. They're just fiber free. They'll get your, uh, they'll get your fingerprints off um, and not leave any fibers behind to mess with your data. So once you've put in your blank, that's what we call this, you close the top. And then what you want to make sure is that all of the 470 nanometers of light are making it all the way through um, your sample, that blank, and none of it's being absorbed. And so in order to check that, you can see right now I'm looking at transmittance. I should have 100% transmittance. The reality is it says 101.2. So somehow my sample is producing light. Well, it certainly isn't possible. And so what I need to do is tell the machine what we're reading right now should be at 100%. And so I'm going to take my knob that says percent transmittance and I'm going to twist it until I get that number down to 100. And so I twist. It's very, very sensitive. And you may not be able to get it exactly at 100. And that's okay. Get it as close as you can. You can see I'm barely touching it and the numbers just jump all over the place. The longer your machines had to warm up, the easier this step is. Okay, so we're going to say that's about as good as we're going to get. Then we're going to make sure that absorbance is zero. Okay, so if everything is transmitted, nothing is being absorbed. To switch over, we push the mode button, and you see it goes to absorbance. And look at that, we are pretty close to zero. I'm not going to mess with it at all. If for some reason it wasn't reading zero, I would twist my knob here, the one to the right that says 100% transmittance, zero absorbance. I would twist this to get that number to zero. And I can try to tweak it a little bit and see if I can get it. Oops. Sometimes if you twist in the wrong direction, it's okay. Just twist back. I'm going to try to get it. Oh, exactly at zero. Oh, exactly at zero. Um, if you, like I said, if you get it really close, it's okay. Don't freak out about it not being exactly right. Um, oh, 
I overshot it. Uh, if you walk up to it and it's on absorbance, you still need to check the transmittance, and so you push mode until we get back to transmittance, and there we go. Once you've calibrated it with your blank, leave it like that until you're ready to start collecting data. So then, in the other video, I showed you how to prepare your test tubes. You mix your test tubes, you put it in the cuvette, and we put it in uh, your spectrophotometer, and then you take data readings at um, the increments that I say in the video, or that it says in your lab notebook. That's a spectrophotometer that's the down and dirty. Hopefully you don't have to mess with them too much, but I want you to be prepared in case you walk up to it and it looks weird. Um, thanks for watching my spectrophotometer video. Have a good day.